Hey beautifuls, welcome back to Women, Wine and Wisdom. I'm Jimmy. I'm Naomi. And today we have a guest with us. We do, we have Leah May. Thanks guys. <laughs> I'm really happy to be on here today. No, thanks for coming. And we're glad to have you. So as you know, we always kick it off with some wine. So today we have a French wine. And oh. please don't crucifate me. Um, cru- is it crucifying me? Crucify. Crucify me, yeah. <laughs> I want to say cremate and then, yeah. But please don't kill me. <laughs> um, so, Cross Colossus. Um, yeah, it's a 2021 wine and it's French. So, we're going to enjoy it for you um, and grab a glass. Yeah, make sure you grab your glasses, guys. Yes, well, yeah, so cheers. Let's cheers. Clink, clink. <laughs> Let me actually pull over my phone because I'm sure I've look already had a, a few sips already and it's so nice. <laughs> is it really good? It is really good. Really, really Ooh, good. Oh, yes. Mm. We're going to link it in the description, guys. So get yourself a bottle. Yeah. yeah. This is nice. It is. And we can sit back and get comfortable and enjoy the swine. <laughs> <laughs> as well as the conversation, obviously. Yeah. Um, Tell us a bit about you. Um, that don't know, okay, right? so, God, I feel like I've had so much things that I've done. But anyway, at the <laughs> moment, <laughs> I am Leah May. I am a content creator. I am also a mother, a wife. And I'm basically here today to talk about, I guess, all those new things that I've kind of added to my... my um, Palette. Yeah, my palette in mm. the last few years. So I've got three kids under the age of two at the moment. Wow. Um, well, they're two and under. Wow. Like, and yeah, it is mad. <laughs> it is crazy. I can imagine. But I'm just doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So, and that's yeah. the thing. I think that's why I have so many friends that are just like, how does she do it? And I literally say, I don't know. I feel because. like I've asked this question to you a yeah. few times, right? Yeah, I get it yeah. all the time. Mm-hmm. But okay. you know what? I do feel like as women, we are just great. So yeah. if you were in my shoes, you would do it. And that's what I always say to people. So like, even though you might look up to me in a way in terms of like, oh my God, I don't know how she's doing it. But I really honestly feel like any mum would. Not saying or taking away from the fact that it is hard and they are breaking my back. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you could do it. I love because. the fact that you you actually say, you know, it is breaking your back as well. Because, again, a lot of people oh, yeah. and a lot of women will feel like, you know, you do it. And what it looks like to me, for example, on social media is you just go from strength to strength. Mm. So I like the fact that you've highlighted that there are some downsides sometimes. Oh, um, yeah. And it can be difficult. Oh, yeah. yeah. So um, that is amazing. I love yeah. that. Definitely. And yeah. I think also, just to clarify, when she says she has three under the age of two... You've got twins. Yeah, I've got twins. <laughs> Not that I just pop, 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 pop. pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I mean, I, <laughs> still kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, really. But, um, yeah, so my first daughter is going to be free next week, but my twins are going to be a year and a half uh, next month. So, yeah, wow. it's, yeah. So, basically, there's a year and a half gap between them. And it's been a pretty much a whirlwind. I'm yeah. not going to lie. It's taken a lot of adjustment and... I know some, like, sometimes people say to me, like, you know, does it get easier? But I'm just like, do you know what? With each milestone, there's difficulties. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So, like, in the beginning, it's like I've got two, like, three babies. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to, like, split my time and make sure, like, you know, I'm feeding every two hours and all that stuff with the yeah. twins. But now it's like it's a different thing. It's like stimulation and making mm-hmm. sure the twins are all right in that sense. And then you've also got Chanara, making sure she's, Chanara's the oldest, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, making sure she's stimulated as well, where she's like, her comprehension is there, mm. but she needs the fun and the activities yeah. a lot more as well. Age. So, yeah. yeah. So it's all of that as well. But yeah. I've definitely written down some questions because, okay. I, again, I feel like there's so, I have so many questions, you know, mm. um, and I feel like a lot of women also will. Um, and as you know, me and Amy like to plan. So. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of questions. Let me see if I can pull some of them up. Okay. I was going to say, one of my first questions would be, how has Chinara, how did Chinara adjust to having not just one sibling yeah. coming into the picture, yeah. but two? Yeah. So just to put into context, Chinara was a COVID baby. So okay. she was born literally a month before COVID hit. Mm-hmm. So for me, like, I was very worried about how she would be. I think through my pregnancy, I think she started to realise, and she did act a little bit different to me at times. So she was mm-hmm. a lot more clingy with my mum at times because mm-hmm. I couldn't physically like pick her up and do those things and whatnot but adjusting to the twins coming home like she was really like oh my gosh yeah she has some moments where you know she wants their attention and stuff but overall I think she's done really well and I think that's because of her personality yeah she's one of those like children that she's 
very much a people's person and she can get on with things, independently play quite well. So all in all, she's a really good big baby sister. But yeah, I do feel, sometimes I do feel a bit sorry for her because it's like you've had literally every bit of attention on you and then... It was now just snapped. Changed. Yeah, yeah. It's completely changed. But yeah. But some people say that that's actually quite good. Like yeah. that you kind of go back to back with children because when you leave too much of a gap, then that mm. child, that they're, they're so used to being by themselves True. that when they have to be like introduce new siblings, they're just like, what is this? Or yeah. what is happening here? Yeah, I think yeah. that's I think that's true in a way. But then do you think with time it will it grows and it changes? Because she's like, oh, okay, now I've got two siblings. I mean eventually they seem not to be going anywhere mm, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. you know what i mean so i think mm. with time it might i mean not all kids mm. but some kids it will change mm. yeah but then that brings me to question number one okay. um how do you set up your daily routine with three kids okay so one of the key things is that we started um a routine with the twins as soon as they came home now i know a lot of people like are like you know you shouldn't do this but we started sleep training from the beginning. And I oh, thought that wow. that was really integral to us being able to get to the routine we got now. Okay. So now, like, I work part-time in the um, in the morning mm-hmm. and I have another contract that I kind of do, which is a bit more flexible, but anyway. So my main with my main contract I do in the morning, I will get up with the kids. Yep. My husband will probably sort out Chanara, get her ready for nursery, and then I will sort out the twins. Yep. And it's just really like, because we know that the twins' schedules and when they're going to have their main nap yeah. for the day, I always just base around everything. So I make sure they have enough breakfast, make sure they're full, make sure I've done everything so that I can log in and then, you know, get them in a position where they're like occupied, they've yeah. had their breakfast and just, yeah, to be able to get through the day. The only thing that I do sometimes struggle with is just the stimulation throughout the day. So like mm-hmm. I'll have to take them for a walk sometimes or, you know, and sometimes I'm still like doing my own work and stuff. Yeah. So it just gets a bit mm-hmm. like, oh my God, like, <laughs> how am I doing this? But I think it's just understanding what your child's cues are. So whether they are, you know, what times their naps and all of that, and then just building around that. So mm-hmm. it's very much around Children. Yeah, about the children, really. Wow. So it's and almost like a shift from, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, me, yeah, me, yeah, me, me, yeah. to yeah. about them, mm. them, them. Yeah, no. I course. mean, I wonder how long, did you, did you struggle with that, that change? Big time, big oh. time. Oh, wow. Big time. I was, I'm just Knowing, thinking about it now. I'm like, yeah. I could potentially struggle with that because yeah. it's gone from me, me, me to you, you, you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my and God. knowing Leah from before she had kids, she loved her, not, her sleep. Yeah. Oh one thing you God. could not disrupt Leah with was her sleep. Like, Don't like, wake me because I'm not Before waking 10, up. It's not, happening. <laughs> it's not happening. Before 10 o'clock, not happening. Yeah, I can't <laughs> lie. It has been an adjustment for me, especially because it's like even like just going out. I can usually get a babysitter, but yeah. it's like sometimes it's like, do I actually really want to invest my time in that? Because yeah. actually I could just be relaxing, relaxing. in mm-hmm. silence with no baby <laughs> crying. Like, do you know peace. what I mean? Is that, yeah, yeah enjoying that's a my really peace and relaxing well. and just recuperating because, like, for example, I went on Friday. Whole of Saturday, I was just a myth. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm just like, nah, like, it, yeah, it's a it's a real toss up. It is a real toss up. But and how has your husband adjusted? See, I think he's a bit more like on the go than me. He's got the energy mm-hmm. a bit more than me. But I think mm-hmm. even for him, it's been hard as well. You know, for like going out of the house because he goes out of the house to work Okay. Uh, more time. He does work from home some days, but most of the time it's, you know, he's going out. So I think for him, it's like, I'm having to get on the train, come back home. The kids are there. Then I could put them to bed. And it's just, it's just the energy, the energy, but he's more of an energy bunny than me. Mm-hmm. Definitely. It sounds like two jobs. Three. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like, <laughs> yeah. Three it jobs because like, the house is another job. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. And you know what? No, that reminds me. We need to talk about that because yeah. there's a difference yeah. between yeah. being a lady of leisure and a housewife. Oh, yeah. um, and we need to touch on that topic. Yeah, yeah. So the fact that you just said three jobs, I agree. Yeah, yeah. it is, it is. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I keep saying to people, I need a nanny. Yeah. I need yeah. a nanny. Yeah, I think it's important to yeah, yeah to discuss these things as well. As yeah, you said, listen. you know, in terms of alignment, yeah, me and this, like, whoever your partner is, you need to have these discussions. Yeah. I need a cleaner. I need a cleaner. I need a gardener. Listen, something. I don't mind cooking. Bowls, <laughs> bed, bed sheets. That's. Oh. I don't mind cooking, but you don't mind like cooking. Me too. <laughs> so, so yeah, like. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, yeah. I'm trying to think what other questions that we wrote down. Um, 
It's a really good one. How do you give each child equal attention? Oh. And <laughs> do you, know do what? you? Do you think that you can? No, I don't. I okay. don't. I'll be very honest with you. I think that's something that I struggle with. And I think most parents will, if we're being really honest, to be mm. able to give each child undivided attention every single day, like equal splits. It's very, very hard to do that. Because yeah. especially because they need different types of attention. So yeah. for me, I can give the twins a certain activity. So like I can give them like a Montessori activity that I can just make shift at home or a certain toy that they can be preoccupied with for like 10 minutes. But that's like 10 minutes of them engaging. Whereas Chanara, if I'm trying to teach her something, I have to do it with her. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So for example, like I need to, um, if I'm trying to teach her to read at the moment, do you know yeah. what I mean? So I need to actually be physically, there you know, there, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it is hard like juggling the two and, or juggling the three of them um, with that. But I'm not trying to beat myself too much about it as well, because yeah. it's like, I do what I can. Yeah. And my kids are hitting the milestones that they're hitting yeah. and, you know, some days I might give more to the twins than I give to Chanara, and sometimes I give more to Chanara than the twins, but they still all have a bit of me. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So I have to just be real. Do you know what I mean? Ladies, did you hear that? So basically, <laughs> do not beat yourself up when you don't feel like mm -hmm. you're able to give equal attention. Mm -hmm. Different children or yeah, will get different attention on yeah. different days. I think that's really important to yeah. highlight. Yeah, 100%. Um, Absolutely. I think that's very important. Another thing, just spinning it a little bit, you're also a wife. So how oh, do God. you <laughs> how do you how do you balance that? How do you make time for your husband? Because mm. I mean, mm. when I walk into some friends' houses mm. or family houses, and all I hear is Coco Melon in the background, oh I'm like, God. what else Cocomelon. are you guys watching? Listen. It can't just be Coco Melon every it day. Is really mad. I know all the songs, you know. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Hey, I what about do a Paw Patrol? I hear that too. Oh, oh my, we haven't gone onto that one yet, but I know that one Listen, is serious as Cocomelon well. Coco Melon is. Oh. I think, you know what, when you have a partner, spouse, husband, mm -hmm. and a child comes into mix, it automatically shifts your relationship. So mm. you have to, you know, you have to show up for your marriage, you have to show up for your partner, yeah. show up for yourself. It becomes even more intensified. So mm. you're not going to have the same amount of time for yourself and for your partner. You're never going to have that. But for the times that you do, so for example, my mother-in-law is staying with us this weekend because yeah. we went out together on Friday, which we can't always do that. It's quite rare. Mm, yeah. But those little moments that like, we really treasure and we Enjoy. really put, yeah, and we really try and like plan ahead. So for example, Valentine's Day, really this year we really planned ahead because it was like, the babies, they're no, no longer babies. We're not going to have to be, it's not going to be tedious. So we're not going to stay in. We're going to actually go out mm -hmm. and enjoy ourselves, set a plan. Yeah. Um, and it's also just recognizing as well, like sometimes the, the dates can be as simple as just, you know, mm. a takeaway meal in your house mm, and yeah. the candles and whatnot. And just <laughs> doing that, just making mm, that time. But mm. it is hard. I'm not going to lie. And yeah especially in the first stages, like there was like this viral thing that went on the other day about like a pastor saying about um, women um, having affairs with their children or just saying the, a quote that was quite provoking, okay. right? And I kind of, I was really in disagreement of that just because I just felt as though um, with women, we have to dedicate so much time to the child. And so that, and I feel like when you have a partner, they need to also be able to recognize that and be yeah. able to just, you know, understand that it's not that I'm pushing you to the side. Mm. It's just that this baby right now for the first six yeah. months is going to need my breasts at whatever call, beck and call. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. It's just that I think my husband luckily really understood how to be a supportive partner. And even times I've felt, you know. He could support me more in some in some instances, but it's also communicating that. Yeah. yeah. You know, communicating no. mm -hmm. that and actually just making sure like that you are both aligned and recognize that actually, you know what, we need a date night. We need just us not to think about the kids or coco melon or what they need <laughs> to eat and whatever. Just our time. That's how really do you yeah. yeah, it's so important. And how do you recognize those signs? Like how when you're in your relationship, you're mm. married, you have the kids, how do you know when you guys need husband and wife time mm. away from the kids? 
Because I feel like as a woman, oh. it's so easy to get caught up in the kids need me, the kids yeah. need me, the kids need me. Yeah. So how do we recognize the differences? Do you know what? It's like, you know, when you're on like the train and you just keep going, keep going, keep going. Mm. But sometimes it's just Auto-pilot. like, actually, we just need a break from this, actually. Yeah. And actually, if I had the capacity to go out on a date night every single week with my husband, I would make sure we do that. Yeah. Because honestly, it, it's so... It makes you go back to the days where it was just you two. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, like, it's just... I think it's just understanding that, like, you both need times. And I think the cues to recognise it is, like, you might... There might be tension as well. You might mm. be arguing, things like that. Just understand, like, actually... We need a time. We need time. Even mm. if it's just once a month, if you can do it, do something. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. And do you, for me, again, it's like, is that you want to make sure that you're not being complacent in your relationship oh, when yeah. you have kids, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah definitely. Mm. But it is hard. Like, a lot of people and a lot of relationships do falter when children come involved because of the amount of time Good that point. is needed to push into your child. So, um, but yeah, you've just got to shift it and make sure you are still prioritizing your partner Mm -hmm. speaking to them finding out what what they're going through how they're feeling you know as humans we change on a daily basis without even knowing so you know it's just staying in tune with each other but again communication is key like Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean especially when you're stressed out both of us sometimes we're stressed out with work and it's like actually we need a date night we need to go out yeah we need a break this concert's coming up we need to go we need to find a way to be there you know yeah yeah. no that's very important I think that is a really good and big takeaway to be fair I think you need to make time with you and your partner and also Mm. just scheduling like you mentioned like scheduling time in for yourselves like I have a friend who they stick to every Friday is a date night for them oh no matter what see this is it every Friday do you have kids yet They've got three now, oh, and they've really? been doing it for like six years. Yeah, three wow. kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. They had to. They had to learn to schedule in that time because, like Leah says, like it can, you can just get so consumed so with consumed. the kids and work, and you know you just go and sleep in your in your bed when you get when mm-hmm. you get the opportunity to, and so having those days when you know Friday is your date night, whether it's you go cinema or you just stay indoors and you do nothing. Yeah. But her kids are always getting shipped off to grandma. <laughs> oh, always. yeah. Bye. 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 But that's another thing. It's like, how important is it to have a tribe? How, is it, how oh important is it God. to have, like, a support mm. system It is you? so important. Like, even with having a tribe and having people to support me, I find it, still find it hard. Wow. So when I see other women doing it and they're single, like, my mum was a single mum, and I don't even under, I know she had support sisters, but honestly, it's I it's unimaginable yeah. for me if you haven't got someone else that you can mm. depend on apart from your partner or just yourself for your kids. It's really integral. Like my mom helps out a lot. My mother-in-law helps out when she can. So for me, it's like those things are like I would be just I don't know. I want to be here probably. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Really interesting because yeah. Naomi, you always talk about it because we obviously we talk separately a lot and you always mm. say that it's really important to have a tribe and people around you. Yeah, um, and yeah, as in, listen, I will drop my kids at my cousins, my brothers. Yeah. Like, oh, they, I hope you guys uh, all know. Yeah, like, <laughs> so I'm just looking at you all now. Yeah, yeah no, um, it's needed. Because, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. One thing that I always say, and me and my dad always dispute this, so I'm actually, I'm really, really happy to have <laughs> somebody a sil- like similar age, is a mother, is a career woman, and basically has everything going, because, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, I always say that as a woman, you need to love yourself first before you can actually look after mm-hmm. your kids. Do you think that changes? Yes. When you have a kid? Yes. Yeah. My dad's always, he's yeah. like, watch when you have a child. When it's you gonna have be a very child, different. Yeah. I, even right now, like I was saying to you before, I had some real anxiety. I was like, oh my God, what am I going to wear? Oh my God. There's mad times that like, I've been going out, they like with me yeah. and me up, and I'm like, I actually don't want to go anymore because the way I look, the way I feel about myself is completely changed because mm. I've, you know, got an extra tire. Or <laughs> well, first of all, <laughs> she does not have an extra no, tire. No, I do. I have not. I have not. No, no, honestly. Um, so, yeah, it is hard. It mm. is hard in that sense. Like, I think, especially because there's this thing on social media where women are posting, like, the quick snapbacks. Yes. And that is Listen, not a yes. thing for majority of us. It really yeah. is. And I'm glad we're here talking about that. Yeah. I'm glad we're here talking about that. Yeah. I feel like even with with each of my births, my belly has gone down, but I've put on weight 
after that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So the initial stage is like, oh yeah, snap, okay, I can get back in my clothes. Mm. But then after that, it's the eating, the breastfeeding, all of that mm. takes a toll. So, you know, I definitely feel like there's some days I'm just like, oh no, I'm just putting on a tracksuit. I, I don't even want to go anywhere. I don't even want to put a makeup on my face and try and feel something because mm. I feel low. I feel like I'm not anything. But then there's other days I'm like, you know what? I ain't too bad for someone with three kids, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know like, it just comes in swings and roundabouts. Okay, okay, and how does Leah with, ah, I'm looking all right today, you know. <laughs> how does she show up every day? Because again, um, I feel like, as we said, social media will make you feel yeah, a type yeah, of way. Yeah. And realistically, way. we look at social media, but we all go home and have our own insecurities and our mm -hmm. own thoughts. Absolutely. So yeah. this is a question for all of us. How do we show up daily for ourselves? Mm. Do you know what? I think it's also implementing self-care within your routine as mm. as hectic as it is even if it's like a therapy session i started mm. up last year mm -hmm. and like even just having a therapy session every two weeks yeah just made me be able to debrief devaluate de with someone who is completely not in my sphere or well do you know what yeah. I mean? that was really really essential for me um getting your nails done mm. do you know what i mean <laughs> getting, I, ha I haven't done mine yet but getting your nails done like do your hair things just different things like try and you know buy clothes if you can afford it or mm -hmm. get an outfit remix it go in your wardrobe try and find something that just makes you feel good do you know what i mean yeah. but also friends if you've got friends like <laughs> drag your your mum friend out like do you know what yeah. i mean drag them out and just say like babe let's just have a date night like let's go out let's do things mm -hmm. and luckily i feel like the people around me do that um you know fairly enough and yeah so those sort of things i feel like make me feel good or better about myself yeah. you know so I mean? ladies did you hear that piece of advice <laughs> basically drag our mum friends out yeah yeah drag them out Definitely. even if they're like oh, i'm too tired i can't be asked no, yeah. drag them out. Yeah. I know they will drag you out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Of course. I know there's will. always a something going I'm on. I'm like, Leah, grab your bag. We're going out. <laughs> no, I think it's important. You're literally yeah. a social butterfly, though. Yeah. But the thing is, I love the people around me. Like, I yeah. literally, they pour into me and I pour into them. Absolutely. And I know... Like, you know, I, it doesn't take a rocket science to rocket. Hey, rocket. hey wow. <laughs> Don't worry. The wine is wine. It's the fact for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Let me just say it doesn't take a scientist. <laughs> To know that, like, you know, if your friend has, even if it's just one child, talk less of three, mm -hmm. that sometimes they're going to need time to just, you know, offload and unwind and remember who they are as an individual. Yeah. And so there'll be times where I'll message Leah and I'll just say, hey, girl, what are you doing? Should we, let's set a plan. Let's set a day to, like, mm -hmm. meet up and go out, grab a drink, grab yeah. shisha. And I really mommy, do I don't appreciate that, honestly. Because I don't do shisha, mommy, dad. You already yeah. know that. So. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I think it's important. No, it so, is. Yeah. It really is. And also, even like as a mum as well, like if you've got friends that aren't mums or mm. are not in your same, you know, still try and like reach out to them as well. I'm, yeah. I know I'm bad sometimes. <laughs> but Leah will not try. respond. Yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes. I mean, I'll again, career woman, wife, no, no, mother, no, 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 because, no. social media. No, 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 because I'll message Leah. She won't respond, but I'll see her post on Instagram. That's a job. No, no, no. It I'll see her job. post. Sorry, and then I now have to go onto Instagram to say, hello, hi. <laughs> hello, hi. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. WhatsApp sometimes gives me anxiety. Anyway, no, but do you know no. what? I feel like as I've gotten older, that is a thing. Oh, my God. Like, you if you flood your messages, you're like, oh, my God. Can't respond to everyone. You cannot. You and can't. also, if you send me a voice note when I send you a message, they're like, I'm going to take longer to respond because I actually have to listen to that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm terrible anyway. The best time to call me, just call me on the phone. Just call me. Yeah, That's the best time. yeah. As in, I don't even text. Well, I try to text you, yeah. and then you don't reply. Yeah. And then I call, and then you call me, or and I call then I'll you. call you. <laughs> yeah. It's like Jimmy will message me, and then like moments later, she'll just receive a phone call. I just she'll... laugh now though because I'm so used to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just easier. I'm trying to. Think yeah. like, oh, this is a really good question. And do you know what? For me, this is I really relate to this question. Mm. Um, has your motivation changed now that you're a mother? Um, mm. for your from your career. Um, so in career perspective, yeah. I think it has changed. I think when I had Chinara, I was a bit like, do you know what? I don't think I want to get to be a director level. I don't think I want to do that. I think I'm okay with just mm -hmm. getting a good wage mm -hmm. and getting being at the level I'm at now. Yeah. Now I've had the twins, I feel I'm a bit like, do you know what? I actually do want to get to 
a higher level. Okay. Um, but at the same, yeah, because I feel like I'm kind of done now with the whole like having babies and stuff. I think yeah. with Tanara, I've always felt like actually I probably will have another one and mm. whatnot. But where I've kind of done it in such a pressurized back to back way, yeah, I feel like I'm a bit like you know what? Actually, now I can concentrate on myself. I feel like this yeah. is the one year, like the first year in probably since I've been married, where I felt like actually it's time for me to Mm -hmm. take back the reins and go back to the level I was at because I've had to kind of take a kind of step back and a and a and a Mm -hmm. dip because I went back to work after I had Chanar after a year and then I got pregnant again so and it was a bit like the job that I got was like it wasn't as high in terms of grade as I'd been before and it was and I only had accepted it because it was so hard getting a job after COVID and like Mm -hmm. projects just weren't you know, as um, frequent. So, yeah. So now I'm a bit like, nah, I'm going to go back, redo some of my qualifications Mm -hmm. and, yeah, aspire to, you know, get up there again. That's really interesting because, again, me and Nay have touched on it in a few topics. So we've touched on it in the fertility topic with Dr. Temesan. We've touched on it in one of our other topics as well where we talk about um, how does your career and, you know, being a woman kind of change Mm, when you go through motherhood or mm-hmm. becoming a wife and things like that, mm-hmm. or age as well. I think we oh, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's interesting. I'm, I'm actually, yeah. I'm surprised by it, your answer. Yeah. To be honest, I was a bit like before. I was a bit like, no, nah, I'm just gonna coast. It's mm-hmm. fine. But actually, now I'm a bit like, actually, I wanna. Even if I don't get to a higher grade, maybe I need. I might pivot into a new industry. Okay. I might pivot into different things. So mm-hmm. I'm a bit more. I just wanna like add right. more to my skill set yeah. yeah do you know what i mean because also there's people around like in the field that are have got more relevant experience to me than mm-hmm. me when i when i'm gonna be going for certain jobs so i need to make sure i'm more marketable in another way do you yeah. know what i mean so yeah it's just being aware of that do you feel that companies support women that are having children so like maternity mm. and things like that talk to us about it yeah i don't think they do to be honest Ooh. like if i'm <laughs> honest Okay. I don't. I don't think they do in the grand scheme of things. Um, just because. So, for example, I'm a contractor. I've always been a contractor since I left. Well, actually, I had like one permanent job after uni, but after that, I've just been contracting. So, with contracting, you literally only get the statutory statutory maternity pay, which yeah. is low in itself. So, regardless, like I know, obviously, companies will top up when you're permanent. They'll top yeah. it up for a certain amount, but. You know, if you really want to have sufficient time off for your child, which I would, I would always say, a year is probably like, especially with your first child, you want to have a year to just really grow as a mother, mm-hmm. really nurture your child properly. A lot of p- companies are not doing that; they're not giving full t- mm-hmm. full pay um, for a year. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I think they also make it very hard as well because nursery fees are so mm-hmm. high. Like it is diabolical like when I calculate how much it will be for the twins Mm -hmm. and Chanara to go to to nursery it's about 2,600 (laughs) your household also earns I think above 100k then you don't get the tax credits as well that they give which is basically like the VAT or whatever the 20% wow so it's all of these things that you have to consider when you're going back to work. Is it going to actually be beneficial for me to go back to work? Wow. Or am I just going to be going back to work to pay my bills and pay for nursery fees? Like okay. my boss, for example, she said she went back to work and she said um, for the first like six months, she literally was just paying for nursery and bills. And that was it. She had no wow. money to herself. Wow. But she just did that because she needed to get her foot back in and then be able to apply for something a bit higher. Wow. I really I wonder how single mothers then then are they doing that. Oh, yeah, it's, it's it's mad. I mean, obviously, there's different things that I they might be able to be more entitled to. Or mm-hmm. I'm not entirely sure because I'm only basing it on my certain my um, circumstances Experience, right now. Course, yeah. But yeah, it is. I don't think there's enough, and I also think that paternity pay, like for example, if you work at Meta, yeah or one of those big tech companies, you will get up to like six months off full pay. Okay. And also is, if you're at yeah. a certain um, level in some companies, they will allow you to do that and you can do a split. So like I might do six months and then my husband would do six months. So you get okay. that, that versatility, you hear about those sort of um, scenarios, but for the average Joe, for the average black woman, you know, or just women in general, 
that's not that's not something we get. And Most people are like going up to, back to work after like, three four months yeah. sometimes. Wow. Yeah, it's it's yeah. That's a lot. Cause I Flaky, was say. do you remember when I, we was talking about um, finance and um, disrespecting the man, <laughs> and we basically <laughs> spoke about this? Yeah, we did. This is it. This, this is, is it. a prime example exactly. of one of those situations where the reality, unfortunately, will actually have you not out here respecting. Potentially not respecting your partner. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Guys, go check out that video. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> Episode but, two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think I do feel like more companies should be offering a lot more when it comes to paternity as well as maternity. I feel yeah. that mm. two weeks with your newborn. That's. I mean, what is? It's that? questionable, yeah. isn't it? Even like. So my husband got four weeks with each of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and that was with two, two def- separate companies, and that is literally because of probably the kindness of yeah. the manager doing that. Do you okay. know what I mean? Yeah. But other people, it is two weeks, That's and then they take or they take leave. Um, you know, to, to, to double up on it. Yeah. But it's it is ridiculous. That's like I, yeah, it's not. Especially when we had the twins, I was yeah. like, the month went so quick, and I was like, I'm still not quite. Ready, yeah. I, I've got yeah. issues with my C section, and like, oh my god, like, how am I gonna do this? Yeah, so I had to have my mum come and stay with me, and she luckily she was working from home, so she was helping me at the same time. And then mm. Etch would come home and help and stuff. But it's it's it, this country I don't think works very well for women who are aspiring to continue to reach a certain level once mm. they've had a child. I think. You have to kind of make a toss up. Am I at a good level in my career that I can take a break and then come back in, yeah. or and or do I have a good company that can support mm. me? Mm. All of these things you really have to take into um, account. Do you yeah. feel like more women should be considering these um, things when they're going into a career? So, for example, before you decide to go for a company that might, mm. from a from your progression point of view, you're like this has it all, and this is a company that I've always wanted to work for. But if they don't have certain maternity, support yeah. for maternity and things like that, is that something that people should start to consider? I think, I think that you should consider it if you're like immediately looking, so you have a really clear roadmap on when you want to have kids and things like that. But at the same time, I think things change in life. Mm. So go for it. Even if it's a company that's not great on that sort of stuff, you don't know what they could be doing to bring better measures in place. So, you know, I would probably take the risk. No me, I would have taken the risk. But yeah, if you can find, so there was a company that I first worked for. It was an NHS um, improvement company and they gave um, full pay, full maternity pay for a year. Full maternity pay. So everyone that had a baby went off for a year. It was just standard practice that they went off for a year and then they would start to have the deductions in their pay. But and I was like, wow, maybe I need to get a job here. But I was like 23. I was not trying to get (laughs) pregnant at that time, you know? So, but yeah. The thing is, I was just going to revert back to what you said about, you know, the UK um, doing enough and not doing enough. Mm. Because companies, I say companies, countries like the um, UAE, for example, you have 45 days maternity. What? Something along those lines, exactly. Well, to be fair, and then I did, did I send it to you about like the different countries and their different maternity? No, sections? but I would be so oh, interested to see. That. I need to share that because I'll try and find it so we can link it. But um, America has none. You're entitled to zero. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's applicable by state. So certain yeah. states might be two weeks. Some companies, <laughs> women, some, by the way, yeah, not men. We, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. I don't even know to reply to that. It's, yeah, it's all down to the company. Yeah. I remember one of my old witch of a bosses. Anyway. Witch, wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, but her, her, she's actually American, and her, she was saying how her um, sister went on maternity leave for only two weeks, and then she was back to work. Two that weeks. Is, have you even, even so? For example, if you have a C-section, how does that even? Are you, have you even recovered? No way. No. No. <laughs> At all. I mean, I we. Uh, I mean, we probably have American listeners, so I don't want to seem some type of way. But I mean, That's hard. there's is a it's lot of hard. harsh yeah, things is. that are happening out there. But then could that be the reason why some of the women just end up sleeping with basketball players and get, having a child? Well, Oops, boy. did I say that? <laughs> I mean, she said what she said, but I'm just here trying to find boy. the next question. <laughs> <laughs> boy, I don't know. I don't know. It is, it is mad. I mean, 
UAE, I get that. But also, we also got to remember that the companies will compensate as well. So some companies will do, might do a bit more. So, mm. you know, you might be allowed to have six months in the end or whatnot. I don't know. But, yeah, I don't know. It's it's bad. It's, it's bad. Yeah. It's bad. Like, even Nigeria, I think my mother-in-law was telling me, like, it's not, is that a thing? Yeah, it's yeah. Nigeria. I don't even it's know if it's like, a thing. It's like thing. women are like they leave their babies with you know with the people. tribe. Yeah, yeah, and then the yeah, that's people in the do. tribe, and then yeah. they come back to work. But you see it yeah. in Nigeria. You see a lot of the women with babies on their backs. Yeah, newborns. Yeah, like but that's, and that's the difference. Like you said, a difference in culture because in yeah. Nigeria that would be normal. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. let me go to let me go to my company with a baby <laughs> with just hanging on my, on my back. They will be like, "Is everything okay?" Of Social course, services exactly. will meet you yeah. at your desk. That's what I'm saying, but that and that's the difference between cultural differences mm-hmm. because it's just not going to work. It's no. not. But, but getting TFL with a baby on your back as well and then going into work. I yeah. mean, getting them to TFL with a pram in itself is mad. So it's hard work. Yeah, yes. it's hard work. It's hard work. You can't get off at certain stations because they ain't got no lift and no. Nah, it's yeah. No, that was wow. one of the reasons that actually drove me to wanting to learn how to drive from a young age. My mum was yeah. like that with me. She said she ain't ever getting on the bus. And she didn't. So, so she, she just got, it. yeah, she just got her car. Yeah. And I was always in the car. So I kind of like, I think that stuck with me. Like, mm. yeah, you know what? Let me just sort myself out. Should mm. we talk about the impact of having grandparents? And I know some people have probably lost parents mm. um, on their journeys um, to having children and stuff. But... The impact of having grandparents in your children's life? I think it's massive. So for me, I actually grew up in my grandma's house. Okay. Yeah, mm. so I, I, and I actually a lot of, I'm Caribbean, by the way. So I know a lot of people around me who are Caribbean also had that same thing of like, their parents go to work, but then they're all mostly at their grandparents' house. Mm. And I think it's really good because one, you get all the cultural values that haven't been lost down the line. Yeah. And just grandparents are just nicer. Yeah, they are nicer. <laughs> yeah. They're, lo- they're more loving. Yeah, as, they as they get older, they just say what they want, and they're more loving oh, as well. Yeah. It's called the aging effect. Oh, yeah. Social like, back. My mom and my my kids. Oh my god, they literally. Oh my god. They, if they could all hang off her ears literally. and just live with her, they would. That's they what they would. would do. When yeah. her, <laughs> their grandma walks into the room, Leah's mom. It's mad. It is like grandma. Like That's they run so off though. of Leah is, to get to their they, grandma. Literally, if I said, who do you want to live with, me or grandma, she'd be like, grandma. <laughs> like, my, my mother-in-law's here at our house. She's yeah. like, no, I'm sleeping with grandma. I'm not sleeping in my room. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Going to grandma's room. Like, yeah. that's it. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. I've, I've already said to Etchina's mum that when I have kids, I'm dropping them to her because... Listen. <laughs> she Listen. loves children. Yeah, she does. She yeah. really does. Okay. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, and how does Leah May find herself in all this? Mm. Oh my Where are God. you at? I'm still trying to discover myself as a mum and a wife now. I'm not going to lie. And okay. then tossing in the the jobs and what I want to do, where I want to get to, how I want to get rich, all of those things, you know? Mm. Like, it's it's hard. I, I still find myself, some days I'm like, you know, oh, yeah, that's me. And then other days I'm like, oh, what do I like? Do I mm. still like what I liked in 2019 when the world was different as well? Because mm-hmm. things have just completely changed, you yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm still on a self-discovery thing, but I think that's fine, you know? It's absolutely fine because, again, as humans, we are allowed to pivot. Yeah. And new experiences will bring us into new... What What's the word? Like... I'm, yeah, I'm great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like new fears of growth. So, yeah. For me, I'm just like, you know, I've finally accepted that. Okay. I just need to understand what I what I like, what I want to do. So even that doing things solo, like I'd never done that. But I decided, you know, what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to the cinema solo. Like just little That's things true. like that. Like yeah. yeah. So. I've yeah. definitely gone to the cinema by myself, by the way. I haven't. It's uh, so have you fun. not? Oh, I'm, my God. It's listen, the best If I want to watch a movie no. and nobody wants to watch it, I'm going to the cinema. I'm doing it. <laughs> whoever's following me, whoever's not following me. I'm going to set you a task to do it. Don't no. take me a task. I'm not doing it. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're not. Because you're not going to eat by yourself either. Definitely not. Oh, my really? God. I did that. It's it a special. Like, no. It's what? It, for me, it's like, if I'm going out to eat, if I'm taking myself out to eat, I would rather, like, go with some, like, company. Like, otherwise, yeah. I'll just eat yeah, at home by myself. That's why I do most evenings. No. So, <laughs> but it's like, why am I paying to then do no, it in public? I, like, no. Nah. Honestly, it, it really makes a difference. Especially if it's like your favourite restaurant. You just sit there. 
you eat your food, you just enjoy it fully. So you, you will take yourself to Hakusan and just sit there. I did that. No, you didn't. I did. When? Like a few months ago. Oh, I went there. I had a shopping day. <laughs> I met with my friends in intermediate, like in in, and then I said, I'm going to Hakusan. I've seen that. And then it picked me up with the kids. It was great. It was a lovely day. I can really had like, a nice meal. Oh okay. my god! I didn't have to. But I reckon that might be different for me and you. I mean, I would definitely yeah. go by myself. I've yeah. been to restaurants by myself before, but um, I reckon it's different because obviously you're around kids, your husband every single day. Yeah, yeah. So we like, live alone. We can make our effort by ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'll be at home in my. And the thing is, I love being by myself sometimes. Like I love just sitting in my peace. Do I do. Oh my gosh! This is a misconception about me. I do not go out all the time. That's what, no, no. That, that's a misconception about me. No, no. You no, on no, the no, other hand. That's a about me. <laughs> I don't know. I enjoy my peace and quiet. When I go home, especially after being at work and things like that, like I love to just sit and bask in my, you know, just in my aura. And just in my presence. And just, I'm not convinced one bit. I'm not but you can tell yourself that if it makes you sleep well bit. at night. You are rude. You lot, don't listen to you lot. Don't listen to <laughs> Naomi. It's me that likes peace. This one. I do. I've changed. I've changed. Wait, I actually what are you love doing that. on a Saturday? Oh, I'm going. We doing something. Oh, I'm going. Every, even Monday. Every, uh, Monday, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday. No, I mean, what are you doing day? tomorrow after work? That's why. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Next question. Anyway, <laughs> what would you say to women who are, you know, going through a difficult time with, you mm -hmm. know, trying to find balance between being a wife, a mother, and still pursuing their career? Mm. be patient with yourself because there was a point last year around this time where I was really going through a difficult patch and I I just was trying to do everything the housewife thing was not me it's mm. not me I'm not that sort of person <laughs> yeah, anyway yeah. but you know I do what I can with it and I felt like I couldn't keep up with the dishes I couldn't keep up with <laughs> anything in general and um, and just the kids even like just having time for myself, I just didn't feel like I had anything. Um, but I think it's being patient with yourself and structuring what you can do. If you can afford to pay for help, pay for help. Mm -hmm. That can be a cleaner coming once a week, twice a week, even just just that sort of carving out what you can do and just knowing what your capacity actually is. Yeah. Obviously, I still feel like I'm running over capacity all the time, but... There are things at some point where I will get, you know, a cleaner probably every two a week, every two weeks or so. I will start implementing that because it's more affordable for me to do. But obviously, Cosy Lives has me by the throat right now. <laughs> so um not doing that right now. But yeah, you know, just adding those sort of things that just will make life a little bit softer for you if you can. Mm. Also, as much as it's hard to say, if you have people around you that can help, shout. Ask them. Ask them and yeah. actually, or when people offer it, take it. Like, literally, I find it very hard to accept it. Even when mm -hmm. she messaged mm -hmm. me the other day about food for mm -hmm. my child's birthday, I was like, are you sure you really want to do all that? But just take it. I trust Nate to do that, though. It. Yeah, she's honestly, she's yeah, amazing, honestly. Nate. Like, but accept it. Accept the help. Ask for it. If you feel that you can ask for it, do it. Do you know what I mean? Um, what other advice would I give? Go to therapy. Okay. I, whether you think you're in a good state or not, go to therapy. Yeah. Like, have someone else who's, like, completely not biased um, towards you, doesn't know you, nothing, and just speak to them about life. Even if it's just an offload session, just have that. I think if you can, there's um, apps like BetterHelp. Maybe. Better help are uh, a really affordable um way to like do therapy. So it works out to be like thirty five pounds a session, which yeah. is a lot cheaper than some of the other okay. private practitioners. But you can find like people that are black women or you know match your kind of like background and stuff. So mm -hmm. things like that. Um, I was gonna say there's also I've heard some of my cousins mention. Is it an app called Peanut? Yeah, find, yeah, like, local mum. Yeah. yeah, local mom, I haven't yeah. done that, um, but yeah, I have heard of it and I've heard of good things. There's okay. also things like Homestar. If you're really in a really bad situation or you really just need extra help, speak to your um, what's those people? God, not midwives. The uh, health visitors. Oh, yeah, okay. speak to them. They they are with you. I think until at least two, maybe in beyond. I don't know, okay. but. Ring them and say, look, I'm having a hard time. And 
they can put you onto charities like Homestart that basically can either assign you someone that comes to your house once a week, yeah. mm-hmm. um, just helps you out in your house with the kids, whatever, or they can meet you at a certain spot. Um, um, what else? Because yeah. I was going to actually, just to piggyback off mm. of that, I think some women sometimes feel like if they ask for help, it looks like they can't cope. Yeah. And it's, you know, they feel like it's a shameful thing. And mm-hmm. I think it's very important that they realise that it's, there's nothing wrong in asking for help. And probably all the other mothers are going through the same thing that you're going through. Exactly. Also, go to your doctors. Like, just exhaust everything you can. Therapy also is free for your doctors. I know this because I've done it myself. They've got a service called Vitamind. Mm -hmm. Um, So they can refer you. It it is a long way, I'm not going to lie, as everything with NHS. But there is, yeah, still try. There's things on there and you will be prioritised because you're a mum. So, yeah, like... There's things out there. Um, but yeah, like, yeah. That, that's my advice anyway. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. That's yeah, amazing it is. Takeaways. 100, I, was yeah. Best, I was just about to say, we don't even need to wrap it up <laughs> yeah. because she basically wrapped it up for us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on that note, if there's no other questions that you... I don't have any other questions. Mm. However, you guys might have some questions that you yeah. want to ask. Um, if you do... Please comment them. Let yeah. us know. We'll yeah. definitely ask Leah again for you. But also mm-hmm. follow Leah on Instagram so that you can actually personally ask her yourself. Exactly. Um, it's Leah May? Yes. It's Leah May. Yeah, that's it. Um, but as you know, we're going to wrap this up with a cheers. So let me get my wine and cheers, cheers ladies. Cheers.